Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And so today's video is going to be on the Harry and Meghan interview that premiered last Sunday and it was they were interviewed by Oprah. I broke it down into three parts, three things that I thought were really important and that I want to elaborate on. And I have my phone here because I have some notes. And so I'll get into it. Now, the first big thing that Harry and Meghan talked about was whether or not Archie was going to get a title and what that meant for his protection. Because the tabloids, I remember when Archie was born, the tabloids had put it out that Harry and Meghan want their son to have a normal life, so they chose not to give him a title. But when Harry and Meghan spoke to Oprah, they said it wasn't their choice that it was actually the institution that told them Archie's not getting a title because of the line of secession. And I'm going to try and explain this stupid, complicated line of secession thing that the royal family has to determine who can get a title. So in 1917, King George V was like, all right, now everybody going to get his and her royal highness title. So he made it so that the current ruling monarch all the children of the current ruling monarch, they'll get his and her royal highness titles. But the grandchildren of the monarch, they have the option, but only through the male line, right? Can they choose to give the grandchildren of the monarch a his and her royal highness title? So for example, the queen, she has four kids, Andrew, Charles, Edward, and Princess Anne. They all have his and her royal highness titles, right? But it's only going to be Charles, Andrew, and Edward who are allowed to give their children his and her royal highness titles, right? So Charles, of course, he gave William and Harry his royal highness. And then Andrew gave his two daughters her royal highnesses. Edward decided not to and Anne can't because she's a woman. But then now we got the great-grandchildren of the monarch, right? The queen has a lot of grand kids from all her four children. So the problem, right, Harry and Meghan said they weren't given the option to possibly give Archie a title. And Meghan said that if it was to, since the tabloids were already on her, I mean, even before she was pregnant, they were already on her about the race of her baby, the skin color of her, of her baby. They were hounding her all through the time she was pregnant. So Harry and Meghan were worried about protection, like if they were gonna get security. And so they, the institution said that they're not entitled to security because he doesn't have a title and he can't get a title because of the decree. But in 2012, the king changed or she did like an amendment to the law. So I told you, right, it goes through the male line. So the institution said that if Charles become king, becomes king, he'll be the ruling monarch, and Archie would be eligible for a title, right? Charles' first son is William. William is obviously going to get, uh, he already has the, his royal highness, right? And he's next in line for the throne after Charles. Then William's first child is Prince George. He got the his royal highness title because after William, he's also going to be the next ruling monarch. But the queen changed something in 2012 where she gave the other two kids, uh, William and Kate, Louis and Charlotte, she, the queen gave them his and her royal highness titles when she wasn't supposed to. This is way before Harry and Meghan started dating. Charles, who is going to be the monarch after the queen dies, they had asked Charles if they can get a title, if it means Archie would be protected and they were denied and Charles apparently when before he was about before he's about to take the throne he was already planning on slimming down the monarchy and that included not even offering his grandchild Archie and Meghan's future baby that's about to come out spoiler they're having a girl that they're not even gonna get the option like they took that option away so they were basically saying like, okay, how does that look? You have a multiracial grandchild and another multiracial grandchild on the way. And he's the only one that's not gonna, gonna get a title. And the fact that Charlotte and, and Louis were not supposed to get titles originally because they're not in the immediate line of secession. Only George was offered one. So that, I mean, double standards and definitely looks bad optics wise, racism. And 
okay, Megan was like, look, I am not into this whole royal life like that. She was like, I've been independent all my life. So this whole titles thing, it's not going to change me because I've always been me. And she said that I would have been okay with Archie getting a title if it meant he had protection. So they, did, they didn't even offer that. They, did, they denied them to have that. So part two is going to be about the firm and the institution and how they did not defend Harry and Meghan when all the tabloids were going at them, particularly at Meghan, for absolutely no reason. So Harry touched on that a little bit. He said that the firm, which is his family, that they're afraid, that usually they just let the tabloids say whatever they want about their family and they don't ever speak out. Like they rarely speak out. And Harry, you know, I was wondering, like, why? Like, what is the point of having a monarchy or saying you guys are royal, you know, you're so whatever, and you don't even have a voice, you don't defend yourself? You're just royal in name only. Like, you might as well just go get a regular job and work like how everyone else is. Like, what? And I saw a little bit of that watching The Crown. And yes, I know The Crown is a fictional TV show. In fact, The Crown makes multiple, t they make multiple statements saying that, look, we're a fictional TV show. But The Crown does a lot of research. And even though it has good acting and really good writing, they do a lot of research and we can get a little bit of insight into how this family runs. And that is one of the things they did show. The institution, which make up the the palace secretaries, the com uh, the comms people, the uh, assistants, the advisors, they're the ones that run the whole game. So again, what is the purpose of you being royal when you can't even come out and defend yourself? You let other people manipulate your affairs and you also use them to manipulate the tabloids to get whatever story you want in favor of you. Before uh, Harry and Meghan were senior working members of the royal family. That means they had duties. They shook hands, they traveled to different parts of the commonwealth, they had charities that they supported, and they were getting really popular actually. In fact, Oprah spoke a couple times. She asked them, she was like, do you think people were jealous? And Meghan kind of alluded to the fact that, yeah, there were some people in the royal family that were jealous of them because they were getting a lot of attention. I mean, people in the commonwealth were really happy to see a biracial woman that is part of the royal family and someone that could kind of relate to them, at least some type of representation. And they they were jealous that they were getting looks that no one was giving a damn about William and Kate anymore or Charles or really the queen, like no one really cares. So what happens when you're jealous and people are mostly looking at you in a positive way? You try and take them down. And who's the best way that you could take someone down through public shaming and lies and misinformation, the media. It's very powerful. All you need to do is make some type of inflammatory statements, create a story, and boom, you could turn someone's life upside down in a lot of ways. So uh, Megan actually pointed out that the institution, even before she was married, they told her that, look, you're going to be expecting tabloids to come at you and that basically she should stay silent. They call it the British stiff upper lip. Like you just stay silent, you put on a cold face and just let people say whatever, you don't say anything. Because the courtiers and the palace, the institution, they're expected to say things on your behalf. And Megan said that she made the mistake of trusting them. She said she made the mistake of trusting them. And she thought they would protect her, but they clearly never did. No one in the institution said anything, debunking all of the inflammatory statements and lies that the tabloids was printing on her, nor did the family make any statement. So they don't have power. The royal family doesn't have power. And I think they kind of like it in some ways. I do think some members of the royal family like not having to come out and do the work and defend themselves because they can also use the comms people that work on their team to put whatever story that's favorable out there. <laughs> they've they've made statements, the palace courtiers have made statements defending Kate when before she got married to William when there were topless photos of her that were leaked when she went on vacation with William. They've made statements recently about Kate 
possibly getting Botox. They said, oh, she's not getting Botox. They made statements when a rumor, multiple rumors came out of William cheating on Kate with one of her friends. They made a statement on that. They made a statement on Prince Andrew's disgusting self when the Epstein allegations and him messing around with minors came out. Oh, they protected Andrew. Andrew still has his titles. They didn't strip him of his. He's still there. <laughs> the hypocrisy, man, the hypocrisy. And then, okay, I'm going to go to the last part now, which I think is the most important part, which practically fueled all of this together. And that is Megan being biracial, her child being multiracial, Harry finally realizing in his bubble that he's he was in, the royal bubble and the white bubble, that, okay, this is kind of like what my mom went through but even worse because one the internet is here and it stays forever and two because of his wife's race the fact that Megan's biracial he saw things that I don't think he ever thought he would see because they the tabloids I mean they destroyed his mom's reputation and the same thing the royal family wasn't doing jack ish about that they didn't help Diana at all. I mean, the tabloids were practically following her, egging her on, creating this whole villain and hero narrative between her and Fergie, the same way they've done to Megan and Kate. They saw Megan, she's the new one, fresh meat. So we're gonna paint a villain arc around her and we're gonna give Kate a hero arc. And the palace courtiers, none of the comms people, none of the royal family came out to debunk those claims. They allowed it to fester. And you know how bad that makes you look when you have a, uh, your first biracial person on the royal family and you don't say nothing defending her, you know? And in fact, Megan talks a little bit about that. She was like, from before I even married Harry, there was a rumor that came out in the tabloid saying that Megan made Kate cry because of flower girl situation. And Megan was like, it was actually the opposite. Kate made me cry about the way I tried to decorate the flower girl dresses. And the palace courtiers never came out and said anything about that. They let the rumor go on. And also it speaks to Kate's character, Kate and William's character. You knew this was a problem, that that wasn't the truth, but no, you allowed it to happen because what, you have to stay silent? You could have said something and you knew the pressure was even more on Megan because she's American, because she's biracial. And she knew that she was benefiting from the story. Even though Megan said that her and Kate have made up, I think she's kind of cons holding back a little bit, you know? Megan said she has the letters of Kate apologizing. But to me, Kate, that was a BS apology. You knew the tabloids were going to continue to gun her after. You knew it was wrong. Yet you didn't push your own people to at least make a statement. Okay, you don't want to say it with your own words. You have palace courtiers. You could have pushed them to be like, look, like, let's get the truth out there. But no, you didn't defend your sister-in-law. You didn't defend your brother-in-law. <laughs> Bye. So, Megan talks about how that intense, relentless pursuit of the British tabloids and her not getting defended by the palace or the courtiers and her not being allowed to speak practically made her feel so lonely that she was suicidal. And this woman was pregnant while she was feeling those things. She said, I would look at the pictures of me going to the events and everything and I had to pretty much smile. She was like, you could see Harry's hand holding me tight because she said she tried to get help and that she had spoken to the palace courtiers if they could provide her therapy. Because she said when she was an actress, the SAG after a, she was in a union, the, which was the SAG after a union, and they had therapy lines that you could go to to get help. And they told Megan that, mm, sorry, you don't work in the institution, so you don't get that. So she was like, I pretty much had to stay inside my house, couldn't defend myself, didn't have really anybody to turn to. She couldn't leave on her own if she wanted to anyway, because they take your, she said, they take your passport, they take your driver's license, you can't really drive on your own. And speaking of, you know, her not driving on her own, right? I remember there was a huge tabloid nonsense article published by probably the Daily Mail, where Megan was getting out of her car and she opened the car door herself and closed it herself. And they were like, she's breaking protocol. How can she open the car door by herself? But these are the same people that would say she's being 
uh, entitled and a diva for her opening the car door as well. I mean, like, damn if you do, damn if you don't. And this is someone who's used to being independent. She's worked multiple jobs before. She's from a place where we don't give a damn about royalty. We don't do that here. You know, people work and do stuff normally. So she's obviously going to have a bit of a hard time adjusting to palace life. And they attacked her for that. And the tabloids, um, they continued to attack her and the palace did nothing. So I've seen that a lot with black Brits coming out and saying that England has a lot of covert racism and they try to act as if they're the beacon of, oh, kumbaya, we've moved on. But they were like, no, there's a lot of racist attitudes of Brits, of white Brits in particular, and that they're glad in some ways that Meghan came into the royal family because people finally saw across the world that there's a lot of outwardly racist people in the UK that support you know the subjugation of black people support racism and they just push it aside they're completely indifferent to it and it's really interesting about the whole Archie skin tone conversation because Megan right she's biracial but she's very very light I think she's almost white passing in a way or at least she's racially ambiguous so they were freaking out because they were thinking oh what there could be a chance that archie ends up having a darker skin tone there could be a chance because genetics are really weird like that obviously archie right now he has like a brownish reddish hair but he has brown eyes like megan his skin is pale but like it's like you could still kind of tell that he has some black in him I don't know if that sounds appropriate to say, but you could tell like he's not a full white kid. But the fact that they were worrying so much about Archie's skin tone just shows that that archaic racist mentality. And Harry was like, he he was surprised that they actually said that to him. Like someone in his family said that to him to his face even before this poor baby was born. And I remember before she had the baby, the British tabloids, oh, they went into that too. One uh, photographer or something from one of the tabloids said that they, they put a picture of a couple and a chimp and said, here comes the royal baby. They compared Archie, the poor boy before he was born, to a chimp. I mean, and, you're, and you still don't make a statement? You still don't say anything? Your future grandchild is being compared to a chimp, which is one of the oldest racist caricature stereotypes about black people. And, you know, I sometimes wonder, I'm like, Megan is getting all this hate as a biracial woman and a biracial woman of a very fair skin. Can you imagine if Harry had married someone 100% black that was maybe her mom's skin tone or even darker? Like, can you imagine if Harry married a, like, a Nigerian? Hmm. <laughs> The way they pretty much framed Meghan as this like Jezebel who charmed Harry and took him away from his family. They would have said some cray cray stuff about Meghan if she was a Nigerian girl. They'd have been like, oh, oh did you hear Harry is marrying um, a former member of the Commonwealth? Yeah, she's Nigerian. She's Nigerian. And I don't, I don't trust those Nigerians, you know. You remember when they were a colony? They, they had this weird... Um, this weird juju, you know, they use juju to charm people. They have these witch doctors, you know? And I think, I think she used juju to charm Harry because how, how else, you know? He's attracted to the exotic, you know? <laughs> you know, they, they'd probably say some, some racist, mm, mm, cra, effed up stuff like that. Like, they would have, they would have really, really went in. But the fact that they're they're already going in now, despite all of that, just shows that that family, we don't need no damn monarchy. Final thoughts. This interview was very much needed. Um, the royal family and the palace courtiers are butthurt. The tabloids are butthurt, i.e. Pierce Morgan, who has been relentlessly obsessed with Meghan just because she went for one drink with him and then decided not to speak to him ever again because that man has been on her saying racist things crazy things i mean he needs therapy himself like i don't think he's okay he no one should be that pressed like the way the way the tabloids 
just turned the the support and love especially in the UK towards Megan and to some people on the conservative end in the US here that are supposed to be not royalists but seem to have an affinity for respecting royalists I'm like okay you're American what business does the royal family have in concerning you so like why do you think this institution needs to be supported but yeah like they were on them you know and props to Harry for standing up to his family standing up to the the palace and Megan for just not refusing and and still maintaining even when it was difficult even in the face of racist attacks to maintaining to finding her her voice again and so i i mean i think they're going to be fine it's still going to be hard there's going to be people still talking or whatever but the royal family they they're the ones they made a statement actually today some water-based statement that oh we're saddened by the racist allegations and um they're still part of the family like they didn't say anything worth of substance like they didn't say anything for the past three years now they want to say something and they were even saying before the interview happened the royal family and the tabloids put out a statement saying that megan had bullied a staff member when this woman hasn't had any type of allegations of bullying all this time but just when she was about to get in the interview, there's a accusation of bullying. How petty, how pathetic, how dis disgraceful, how disrespectful. So I think they're going to be fine. I, w I wish Megan, you know, uh, a safe pregnancy. She said she's about to have her daughter in the summertime. And thank goodness out of that toxic life. You know, Harry has talked about how he enjoys just doing regular things with his uh, child. And... They're going to be fine. They're already doing a lot better. There's already a lot of widespread support for them. And the royal family, they could just continue in their miserable, crazy, reckless life. No one cares. So that's all I have for today's video. Um, if you like it, please sure to click that like button. And also be sure to subscribe to my channel. And let me know in the comments what you thought about that interview. Because there was a lot to be said. And in fact, Oprah released more things. So... Yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.